Hey guys, how y'all doing? Bionicosaurus here, and in this video we are going to be taking a look at the Papo Cryolophosaurus. This model was released in 2017 along with several other now beloved theropod figures. And while most view this figure as the inferior to its contemporaries, the Ceratosaurus and Acrocanthosaurus, I've actually grown quite fond of it. The pose is not entirely likely, that is, there's no really obvious or particularly feasible reason why it would strike this pose, but the pose is, as far as I can tell, achievable. It's certainly not bone-breaking, at least ignoring the bendy tail. And it's well-balanced and bipedal, at least on flat surfaces. And in person, it's surprisingly dynamic-looking. All in all, this figure looks rather sleek, fluid, and lifelike. In terms of size, the figure totals at about 4.5 inches, or 11.43 centimeters in height, and approximately 6 inches, or 15.24 centimeters in length. If the figure were not in the pose that it is, is, and it held its neck and tail out fully extended, it would actually come out closer to 9 inches, putting it at something like 1 27th scale. The whole figure is coated in a clear gloss, which is, to say the least, distracting and visually non-beneficial in my opinion. But thankfully, this is somewhat made up for by the paint job itself being quite nice. The transitions and blendings between different colors and shades aren't the smoothest in person, and some areas of the figure are a bit bland and simplistic in their paint application but the colors and patterns themselves are quite nice. The orange that runs along the figure is very attractive, and all of this black striping and complex patterning is really well done for the most part. The tan areas of the figure are also highlighted with a dark brown wash to add depth and pop to the lower areas in the sculpt's texturing. I do wish, however, that the iconic crest atop the head had some kind of display coloration. That would probably be more accurate as well. Speaking of the head, the head the head sculpt on this model is quite nice. The expression and shaping is all dynamic and full of life. The scales are sculpted fairly meticulously, and the texturing on the crest itself is quite good. Papo also seemed to have taken particular care with the sculpting and painting of the dentition and mouth interior with this one. And like most of Papo's theropods, this figure features an articulated jaw. Though it is worth mentioning that the lower jaw of my specific figure has cracked, and I haven't even opened it particularly wide as far as I can tell. I wouldn't necessarily let this sway you on whether or not to get this figure, because I haven't heard of anyone else having this particular problem, but in the interest of full disclosure, I thought I would bring it up. The head sculpt also pretty closely matches the actual skull of the animal, at least from the material that we currently have available. Though the nostrils are a bit far down toward the tip of the snout, and the premaxillary notch appears to be a bit on the subtle side. Based on the remains we have available, and on Crowl Officer is currently accepted phylogeny, the rest of the figure doesn't have any major anatomical oversights. Though the whole thing could stand to be a bit more gracile. In terms of proportions, the neck could also stand to be slightly longer and the head a bit smaller. Also, there is no cloaca as usual. The rows of spines and small osteoderms along the figure's neck, back, and hips are not supported by direct evidence or phylogenetic inference, but they aren't impossible, so I give them a pass. So in conclusion, out of our five ratings, this figure is getting a solid 4, or recommended. Is it an absolute must-buy? No, not at all. But it's a competently made model, and certainly exceeded my personal expectations. Thank you for watching, and Bionicle Saurus, signing out.